Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Farmhouse Italian Cooking. Tonight we're doing chicken cacciatore. I've got eight thighs without the skin. In a medium high pan, we're going to put them face down, bone up, okay? What we're doing here, with a little bit of olive oil in there, All the measurements will be at the end of the video, so be patient. We're just gonna brown the chicken. Not fully cooking it, we're not frying it, we're just getting a little color on it and getting some bits of the chicken on the bottom of the pan. We want that flavor. Now, for the reason why I don't use the skin. The skin is gonna bring on too much fat, by the time you're done, you're gonna have a lot of oil inside your sauce and your whole dish, it's gonna be like an oil slick. You don't wanna use the skin in this particular recipe. There are ones where you want the skin, not this one, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're using wine, butter, garlic, always I use the butter with the garlic, salt and pepper, of course, bell peppers, chicken broth, olive oil and the sauce that we had shown you on uh, basic Italian marinara sauce. That video is the one with the sauce that I'm using here. The chicken is going to kind of stick to the bottom of the pan and you want that. Some parts of the chicken are going to come off, they're going to end up in the bottom of the pan and you want that to stay on there because this is where you're going to build your flavor. Medium high will give you enough time to work with it. If you're really fast, put it on high, but I don't recommend it on the first time around. So you'll see pieces of the chicken sticking to the bottom and you want that. And that's why you put very little bit of the oil in the bottom because you want more of the, the chicken, uh, more to sear than to fry. If you put too much oil, it'll start frying the chicken. It's not what you're going for, okay? You start getting them, a little color on them and you start building what we call fond which is comes into the name foundation. So you're building this from the bottom up, okay? When I cut the peppers, I cut them about like this. And um, they call these batonets in school. Um, just think of French fries, a half a French fry. And that's about, the size that I cut them. And I cut them a little bit bigger like this because you're gonna simmer this and simmering this as you cook it is you're getting the flavor out of the bone in the chicken. And that's part of making this dish full of flavor. So you're gonna simmer it for a while. You want your peppers to hang around. You make them a little bit bigger so they take longer to cook is the reason for that. You're not cooking them all the way through here. You just brown them on the outside and not even really browning them much. And this is what you're looking for on the bottom of the pan. Everybody see that? All the pieces on there, the pieces of chicken starting to turn brown, but they're not burnt. That's what you want, okay? Back on the heat and make sure you're on medium high or even high. If your stove is a little sluggish, go high, all right? Because you want this really hot. Because what we're gonna do is, you probably heard the term deglazing, and I'm gonna do it with the wine. And this is my white wine, the Pinot Grigio I like to use, which you can use red if you like, but red might be a little too heavy. 
So I'm going to deglaze the pan and I'm going to bring in the peppers. I'm going to scrape the pan as I'm doing that, make sure I get the bits up. And it's coming up really nice. Now I added some peppers, I need to season them, salt and pepper. I always get my salt and pepper in there as I go along. And like I probably said before, salt and pepper is to season your food to bring the flavor out of your food. It's not to make things salty or peppery, okay? Now if it seems to be going a little fast for you and it's getting a little dry, this is my backup. It's a little trick. I keep a little water. I put a little water just to keep it a little moist. Not a lot. A little bit of water, okay? Now I'm back. I'm on about medium high, about a medium, and I'm bringing in my butter and my garlic together, of course. Two tablespoons of both, of each. Sorry. And let it come in and start melting in. Once your butter starts melting, bring up your heat. Again, medium high, maybe even high if your oven's a little sluggish. Mine seems to be a little sluggish, so I'm going high. I'm bringing it up. I don't want to fry my garlic. You don't want to do that. Cooked garlic is easy. Nice and easy. Don't cook your garlic hard because then it's going to get real nasty on you. You don't want that. It starts all blended in, mending in like this. Smells wonderful, okay? See all the pieces of chicken in there and the butter and the garlic? It's beautiful. And it smells really good. So what we're going to do, because this is chicken cacciatore, I'm using the chicken broth. And now I'm definitely on high, okay? Chicken broth, and now I'm going for my sauce, my basic marinara, which I had that video also. I put about a half a can of that broth in so far. And I'm bringing in the marinara now. You want to bring these a little at a time, a little of each at a time as you're doing it. And you want to make sure you're simmering the whole time. Because what you're doing is you're, you're, me you're melding them. You're bringing them together. And you're cooking your peppers. And now that you have liquid in there, you're protecting your garlic from getting fried up, okay? A little more broth, some more marinara, we're halfway done here. This is one of many dishes that you'll be able to make with the basic marinara. We had that video on our channel. It's going to be called basic marinara, and that's, this is just one of many. This is chicken cacciatore. There's another one I'm going to do, sausage and peppers. It's a really good one, and if you get the technique and the process out of this dish, you can make the sausage and peppers just the same. It's the same process, same technique, just different ingredients. You'll find out a lot of my videos do that. They use the same techniques and processes, and I change the ingredients. And you come up with all these different dishes with these same processes. It makes it a lot easier for you to learn a lot more recipes. Okay, the rest of the broth. 
I don't want to get all of my marinara in there. I don't want to waste any of this. This is like gold. It's my base. So now I got it all together. It's still simmering. I'm going to bring the chicken back in. And I'm putting the bone down because I want to make sure the bone is submerged. Because as you simmer this, it's going to take the flavor out of the bone. And that's what you're looking for. And it's going to bring it into your dish. It's going to be delicious. This smells delicious as it is right now. After it sits on the stove for about 45 minutes at a low simmer, the whole house is going to be like heaven. And even the juice from the chicken. Now you bring it down to a low simmer. Make sure that they're all covered. Bring it down to a low simmer. You cover it and you simmer it. You can simmer it for about 45 minutes, maybe 30. Check the chicken. Once the chicken's done, it's ready to go. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, and we'll let you know when we got another video. Thank you for watching. 45 minutes later, we simmered on the stovetop, or you could have done it in the oven for at 350 for 45 minutes, would have done the same thing. Freed up the stovetop to make, yes, pasta? No, what I did was roasted garlic mashed potatoes. Yeah, I know. You're supposed to be using pasta. Well, I used to. I still do. But when I came to the Midwest, I started doing something different. I started using mashed potatoes for something that I'd use pasta for. So I put roasted garlic, butter, salt, pepper, some uh, cream or milk, and I made some nice mashed potatoes. I took the chicken out. I stick blended the sauce and then I simmered it a little bit and made it a little thick. Okay, that's all I did. And I take the, cause I tried this one time and I said, whoa, that's really good. And it was just putting it on mashed potatoes instead of pasta, I couldn't believe it. And the only reason I tried it is because out here, it's steak and potatoes, steak and potatoes. It's like, all right already, I'll make some potatoes, you know? So now I changed this recipe and the sauce acts kind of like an Italian style gravy, they would call in this area of the Midwest, which is anywhere in the Midwest, they call it gravy. I call it sauce, whatever you like. And then I take some cheese, you know, you like uh, Romano, you want uh, Parmesan, you know, any hard cheese or anything that you like in cheese, you just put it over the top. And that's how I've served it before. That's just a new twist on it because I, I learned to use something different, to go and, you know, just change my ways and try something new. So on the mashed potatoes, it turned out really good. When that sauce mixes with the roasted garlic mashed potatoes, it's fantastic. And uh, the roasted mashed potatoes, roasted garlic mashed potatoes will be a different shell. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the recipe.